started recording for the class. Good morning and welcome. Let's uh, take a moment to pray and then we will uh, get started in the class today. Can somebody please lead us in prayer? All right. Once lead, uh, Daryl, maybe you can pray with us. Sure, Pastor. Loving Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence of Father God. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for adding this day in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence as we gather here for the class of Father God. We take complete control. Let us concentrate, concentrate, of Father God. Keep us away from all the distractions of Father God, Jesus. Uh, you lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, we pray a prayer, Father God. Amen. 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 Hey Amen. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. Yeah, I see Dave's uh, message, no problem. All right. So this week, uh, you know, every week we are focusing on one main uh, uh, topic uh, in this whole course on uh, church and uh, ministry administration, how we can, uh, you know, organize and run uh, the the organizational side of things uh, when it comes to the local church or a Christian ministry. So we've, we're touching on topic by topic, uh, spending two lectures uh, on an average, we'll spend about two lectures on each topic. So we, this week, the earlier this week, we spoke about operations. Um, the system and the processes that we need in an organization. So we had, uh, you know, when we started, we talked about the organizational structure. So that means you are thinking about, you know, or if you want to put it in simple terms, yeah, uh, we would talk about the various uh, departments or units or ministry areas within the organization, so the organizational structure. <clears throat> so once you've got, you know, you've got your organizational structure, you're thinking about these various departments, units, um, uh, which of course will evolve over time. So when we start, we start small, you know, you may have two or three departments. Um, you may start very small. And I also shared with you about our own journey. We started with one person and slowly, you know, we started adding more people. So uh, you start with, you, you know, you, you build, keep designing your organizational structure. And then we also spoke about, you know, standards and guidelines that you need, so your policies that you need on how, you know, uh, things that are going to guide the functioning of the uh, organization. So we, you know, you bring in those policies in place, you bring in those guidelines, uh, the standards in place as and when you are building your organization, right? As and when you're adding your departments, uh, you're, 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 you're having these policies, you're having these guidelines, you're having these standards. And uh, keep in mind that all of these things are <clears throat> evolving over time, especially uh, for those of us who are going to go and start a church or start a ministry. Uh, these things will evolve over time. You know, we're not going to start a organization with 25 departments right away no you probably will start with you know maybe two or three and then over time your organization is going to become bigger you're going to have more units or departments and then you're going to have more policies more guidelines why because you're having more departments you're doing more things and so obviously uh, the you know the policies for various different areas uh, different uh, interactions of departments uh, all those things will keep it'll keep growing as your organization grows but as this is happening you must also think in terms of the operations okay how is all this going to work together right how is all of that that's what we're talking this week we're talking about the operations the systems and the processes so let us go back please to uh, just quickly review uh, what we did in the class earlier this week and then we will take it forward right so operations how how is all this going to work together so we 
mentioned, you know, uh, what is a system? You know, it is something that gets the job done, right? Now you can, we just use a simple example. I'm, I'm just reviewing very quickly. Uh, we just use a simple example of a blender machine. You put something in, you put cut fruits in, uh, you give it the power, uh, and then out, you know, your output is fruit juice. So it's a system, it gets the job done. It's made up of, of course, it's made up of various components. There is the, there's the container, there is the blade, there is power supply coming in. Uh, there, there's, I mean, there's a motor underneath and all those kinds of things. But together, it gets the job done. You get your fruit juice. So when you look at the organization as a whole, which we have already designed, or we're going to keep designing, your organization is going to keep growing with new departments and all that. Uh, your organization has many ministry areas. Now, you can use the word departments. Uh, you can use the word units or you know, we just say ministry areas. Right? So the organization, many ministry areas. But when you look at each ministry area, example, youth ministry, children's ministry, you know, publications ministry, media ministry, uh, you may have a IT department, you may have a, you know, uh, different things, different kinds of ministries happening. Of course, for the, if, if it's a local church, a major part would be you know, the service services, running the services. So each area, when you look at it, for that, you, you, you see that it is made up of smaller systems and there are interactions. These are processes, uh, interactions between those systems. Meaning within that department, ministry area. I'm sorry to uh, disturb Pastor. Kanan is waiting. Kanan is waiting. Let me see. Oh. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Conan came in. Uh, all right, Conan, you're in. Okay, sorry about that. Sometimes when I, you know, when I'm on the PDF, it, the auto admit doesn't work well. So people get held up outside. Okay, so we're yeah, back to the picture. Um, so within each ministry area, there are many systems. In our case, uh, so what, what, do you, what do you mean by system? It's a repetitive function or activity that keeps on happening you know, over and over, over again. It's a repetitive thing. The same thing goes on. And uh, in most cases, that, that system is really made up of one or more people who are fulfilling a certain role. And each individual may have a set of skills and performing functions. So when you think about a system, when you think about one of these boxes here, it's actually, you know, several people who are doing things together, uh, different parts of what needs to be done. And they are, they make up that system. And then they have, they have to interact with other people, right? Uh, so the process is basically a flow of information, interactions, exchange of, uh, you know, work related products and finance and so on, various things. So we talked about it in an example of accounting department. We talked about, you know, in how the offering counting happens, how the check happens in the uh, office, and then how the deposit happens when the money goes. We're just looking at uh, some of those examples. Uh, we also talked about the analogy of the human body, how the human body itself is made up of so many systems. You know, so at a high level, it has about 11 or 12 systems and these systems you know every system has its components you know the organs that make up the system and then uh, the systems interact with each other so they're all interdependent on each other and they interact with each other and all the systems put together make up the body make up the human body and so the church or the ministry is very much like that okay so uh, our goal here is to get us to think about the organization as made up of these smaller units, which are systems. And each system has to be optimized for the whole body to function well, for the whole organization to function well. Every part of uh, every system, it has to go down to system level, right? So the organization has many departments or uh, ministry areas. But each ministry area has within it many systems. 
for the whole organization to function well, every system has to be well designed. It's got to be functioning well. That's when we can say the whole organization, you know, is doing well. So that's what we're trying to get at. And uh, uh, so we said, okay, you know, what are some things to keep in mind when you want to design the system well? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just quickly re I'm reviewing some of the things we did, went through. So we said, you know, these four things, better, faster, cheaper, different. You know, how can you do some with excellence? And you know, what can you help, uh, in, you know, so you think about and in the system, what can we do to make the work better? Excellent, right? So, for example, you know, um, uh, I'm just thinking. So, uh, okay, we have a publications ministry. So, you think of the big box publications, but in the publication, there are many smaller boxes, smaller systems. One is okay, you know, the writing of the book. Then the uh, uh, when they, uh, the the um, the generating of the book that's going to be printed, then the printing of the book, then the uh, inventory of the, you know, stocking the book, the dispatching of the book. So all of these things are little parts of that whole ministry area, and each one has to function well. So let's take one of those boxes. One of the boxes could be, okay, the, 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 uh, yeah, what, what do you call it? The, the, getting the book ready for printing, right? You know? Now, that has to be absolutely perfect, right? Uh, you know, for example, no, nobody would like to open a book and then see spelling mistakes there. You know, nobody would like to open a book and say, hey, there's grammar mistake, or there is page layout uh, mistake, and so on. Now, over the years, in the past, you know, we've made mistakes. And, uh, and there was a time, and you you won't believe it, but there was a time when our books were printed, and I opened the book, and content from a different book was printed in this book. So we had sent, you know, uh, two books to be printed, uh, uh, and uh, and I opened one book. And the text that was actually part of another book was printed in this book. And this was a physical book. That means the book had already been printed. I, you know, you, 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 I don't know how to describe how I felt at that moment because, you know, when we print, we usually print 2,000 copies at least. So that means, you know, 2,000 books have wrong, you know, it's like a mix of two different books. And, uh, it was so upsetting, you know. Uh, but you now, so the immediate question is, hey, in that system of getting the design of the book ready, where did this go wrong? Where did this go wrong? You know, so I have to address it because this cannot happen a second time. You know, and in fact, it was happening the first time also. It was pretty bad, but... It cannot happen. It should not happen. So something is wrong in that system. You know, where did it go wrong? So we had to take a look at it, you know, where? Because we've put a system together with some processes there. And somehow, in spite of that, we end up with this bad result. You know, and it costs money. And so we had to rework, you know, we had to, you know, we can't waste those books. So we had to physically have people stick a paper on that text with, you know, to cover it up and uh, 2000 books like that. And uh, it was, it was a big, uh, it was a bad situation anyway. But then you got to relook at that, that uh, box, getting the book ready. Where did we go wrong? We have this process. Where did we go wrong? So, you know, okay, in the proofreading, did, was proofreading done properly? Was it done by two or three different people? You know, so we've got to, you know, change what is happening, put something different uh, so that it doesn't happen again.
And I'm just giving you, so one little box affects every, one, one thing goes wrong in the box, in one system, and then everything is affected, you know. So the goal is things have to get better. Uh, can we do things faster, you know, turn things around uh, in, a, in a faster way? Can we do it cheaper, so less expensive? What can we do differently? So these are things we have to keep in mind when you're designing, thinking about each little box that make up, you know, that particular ministry area or that particular department. But think constantly, keep thinking, what can we do better, faster, cheaper, different, you know? So uh, that's how you think about the system. And then uh, we, uh, yeah, so there are some other things to keep in that designing good system is, uh, Keep it lean, keep it minimal. You know, don't uh, uh, make it too complex. Keep it simple. Uh, it's very important to have the right people because remember, your system is actually people with skills. So, do you have the right people? Do you have people with the right skills in that place? Right. So, you have to look at that because basically every system is made up of people, right people with the right skills doing the right thing. And then, of course, you have to have constant uh, feedback, evaluation and feedback to keep improving what is happening uh, over and over again. Keep checking. If you don't check it, you'll never find mistakes. Uh, so the thing is, you have to check. Is, is it happening? Is it not? Uh, and then you will know what needs to be improved. Okay. So we stopped here when we were looking at... Uh, uh, and we're talking about process design. So uh, here again, we're going back to the book books department or publications department. And we're looking at just one, one piece of the publications department, which is when there are book requests coming in, right? So ultimately, uh, the books have to reach people. And it goes to people in many different ways. You know, we print, we may send it to them. We may send it to bookstores. We may send it to, you know, churches. We may send it to Bible colleges. So, so the books reach people ultimately in many different ways. Um, and now we have digital distribution. So it happens online as well. But one of the ways the books reach people is when people make a request, right? So, so what we are looking at is just one system in this whole uh, publications department, just one piece. And that piece is when, when an individual makes a request. Right? So that can come in many different ways in here. What are the things you need to think about? Well, I need to make sure that, so I'm just, I'm just walking us through the thought process of designing the system and the processes that are around the system. You know, you, you need to think through the whole flow. So when the request comes, I need to make sure that the request is recorded properly, right? Uh, first of all, I need to give various ways, or we call them touch points, you know, for the person to be able to reach out to us. So we have multiple touch points. They can reach us through email, phone call, letter, they can whether through the book table, the staff, bookstores, et cetera. So multiple touch points through which a request comes. So you need to think about that and make this as broad as possible because you want to give people the easiest option for them, you know, however they would like to make the request. But the next important thing is the request has to be recorded. Otherwise, if it's lost somewhere, it will never be fulfilled. So you have a place where this request can be recorded. Right. So you have to think about it now, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can make a very simple uh, right now. What we do is we have a simple Google spreadsheet where all the requests are recorded and the spreadsheet is shared uh, between people. So the person records it here and another person is able to view it, view the request. Right? Now, let's say if, if it gets really big, we can put it into a software system as well to track it. Right now, we're just using a simple spreadsheet. Okay, so the requests are recorded. Then, you, so that's the one part, the re receiving of requests. Good, so there's a process flow. But then this request has to be fulfilled. 
But for the request to be fulfilled, there's a whole lot of things that need to happen. Books have to be printed. They have to be delivered to our storeroom from the printing printers. Uh, an inventory has to be maintained so that books are always available uh, so that this they can be dispatched. Then a, there's somebody who reviews the requests that have come in. Uh, they've got to you know, get the right books out that have been requested, do the packaging. Then it has to be sent out to the post office and uh, or the courier, wherever which we are using. And from there, it has to go to the individual. And then that request is fulfilled and is marked as completed. So you've got to put the system in place. And then you have to clarify to each one what is their part in the process that's working, right? This person who's recording the request does not need to know about how the printing happens or how the delivery, I mean, unless they are actually involved in it, they don't need to know. They don't need to know delivery and inventory. That is somebody else's responsibility. But this person needs to know very clearly how to receive the request, how to record the request, right? So the, the flow of information is clarified to this individual. So then this individual can do their job well, right? And we provide this individual with whatever tools they need to do their part in this process well, right? So that's this person's uh, uh, understand. They must understand their part in the whole system and the flow and the process of information, flow of information. This person, you know, needs to know how to retrieve those requests. And, uh, you know, it depends on what the roles of this person is, if they are involved in, they may not be involved in the whole process of how the printing happens. So they don't need to know that. They just, this person just needs to know, hey, I'm maintaining the inventory. I receive the delivery. That's it. The printing happens through, you know, other people who are involved. So this person understands the part of the process which they are involved, right? So this person's role is clarified. Make sure this person has the sufficient tools and the skills to fulfill this process, okay? So in designing your system and process, what are some things? Now, we... We, we did say, okay, yeah, we want to do it with excellence. We want to do it efficiently. We want to do it cheaper. We want to do it differently. So those are things we're going to keep in mind. Um, and so at every step of this way, you're checking. Am I doing it efficiently? Am I doing it you know, with minimal cost, uh, uh, without things that are going to be delayed? So as you look at this whole thing, first of all, in your mind, you should be clear. This is a system, this is the way it's working, the process. Now, you have to optimize it. That means you've got to make it uh, you know, work as efficiently as possible. You know, fulfill the four E's. How, how would you do it? So I'm just going here. Keep these bullet points in mind. Standardize and describe. That means say, okay, this is how it's going to work. It shouldn't be changing from day by day, right? It's got to be standard. So once you tell this person, this is the way you do it, that's the way they're going to do it. Don't keep it, don't keep changing it, you know, every week, every month. I mean, of course, there are improvements that are made, but otherwise it's a standardized process. Otherwise, this person will get very confused. Hey, sometimes they're telling me do this, sometimes they tell me do that, you know, but you standardize it. This is the way it's going to happen. You know, the books are going to come in, you maintain the inventory, you pack like this, deliver like this, standardized. Okay? And you have to clearly describe it. If you cannot clearly describe the process, then there is something wrong with the design of the system. Right? So you have to clearly be, you have to be able to clearly tell this person, a, B, C, D, this is how it happens, okay? So standardize, it's got to be a repeatable, same thing happening, and it's got to be clearly described. You should be able to explain it in, you know, these four or five steps. 
this is what you are doing. Right? If it is very complicated, that means the system is not designed well, the process is not designed well. The simpler it is, the better the design. Okay. Second, use resources effectively and remove bottlenecks. Okay? So are resources being optimized? Okay, so for example, what are the resources uh, that are involved here? Well, uh, a person is involved. Now, if I have three people doing this and these three people are not busy, then actually uh, it's not uh, a good use of resources, right? So it all depends on, you look at the volume of book requests, okay? What is the volume of book requests? Well, let's say there are about 10 requests every week, fine. How many people do I need to fulfill those 10 requests, right? Do I need two people? Uh, well, I don't think so because, well, typically these, you know, the books can be retrieved and packed. You know, you can do about five requests a day. Um, so at least five requests. So I don't need two people because in one day we can always do five. We have five days in a week, five work days in a week. So it's enough, we just need one person, right? So if you assign two people, if you, or if you allocate two people to do this work, then resources being wasted, you're wasting one person, right? So optimize your resource. What else you can think about? The inventory, right? How much inventory of the books do I need? Well, again, it depends on the request and what you have to send out. So you determine that, for example, we said, you know, and we haven't done this till we stopped a lot of our printing in 2019. Uh, yeah, in 2019. So we're just kind of resuming it. But till that time, till 2019, uh, our, our standard was minimum inventory of 200 books of every topic and just multiple languages. So this person knows when it kind of gets close to 200 printing as reprinting has to happen right so that inventory here you don't want to waste resources so those kind of things packing what is the best way to pack you know uh, the packing material you know dispatching what is the best way to dispatch the cheapest but at the same time it's got to be secure it's got to be efficient so at all of these points you are asking the question am i using resources effectively that's how you're designing, you're deciding on the design of the system and the process. And you want to remove bottlenecks. Now, what do you mean bottlenecks? Meaning uh, things that will hold the flow of information and activity. That's a bottleneck. So for example, I'm just, crea I'm just creating an example. Suppose this person receives requests and we put another person here to approve the request. Example, if they say, all these requests have to be approved by the senior pastor, then the senior pastor becomes a bottleneck. Why? Because his job is actually a really useless job. Why does he need to approve this? Right? First of all, you know, request comes from some unknown people. Senior pastor is not going to know them. And why does he need to sit and approve these? Because he's going to be busy doing other things. But in case, I'm just, I'm just, you know, creating a hypothetical situation. In case we add another step here where all requests have to be approved by senior pastor, then senior pastor becomes a bottleneck to the whole flow of things. Why? Because until it's approved, the work doesn't happen. And he may not have the time to approve immediately. And uh, he may take three days to look at these things and approve. So he's a bottleneck. The senior pastor is a bottleneck. So, is, is it, so we have to ask a question, is it really necessary for him to look at it and approve? No, because it really doesn't make a difference because he's not adding any value. So remove that, you know, so that things can just move faster. I'm just creating a some scenario like this. So you got to ask those kind of questions in order to make the system design and the process flow as efficient as possible.
in whatever you're doing. And we are just looking at one scenario. You have to look at everything that's happening in the organization with these kind of uh, with this kind of thinking in mind. Okay. So remove bottlenecks. Keep the process simple. Avoid unnecessary steps. Okay. What is the simplest way to get this done? Your your question must always be, what is the simplest way to get it done? You know, there is, there is, uh, you know, we say beauty and simplicity, or there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, efficiency in simplicity. So simplicity makes things efficient. Uh, it makes things, uh, you know, av avoids, comp you know, unnecessary problems that could come out of complexity. So the more simpler your process is, the better it is. Avoid uh, unnecessary steps. For example, here, you know, what could we think of uh, an unnecessary step? Uh, if, uh, you know, so, or, or let me let me put it like this. Uh, the usual process flow that we used to do was printer sends the book to us and our person, uh, you know, packs it and sends it. Then some years ago, we said, hey, the printer has a lot of people working there. The printer himself has a lot of, has a lot of storage space and has a lot of packing material. Why can't we ask the printer that can he pack and also send it out for us? So some years ago, uh, and I forget when, we approached the printer and said, "Hey, we'll give you the we will give you the labels. You you know you have people everything. Can you do the whole thing for us, so that our person just makes sure that you know this is done, and uh, we will pay you for that work." And he agreed. For him, it's a little extra income. For us, we are increasing efficiency at this point, and uh, we are decreasing you know, our workload on our own person. So example, when we print one book and we have to send it to about 5,000 people, imagine if he had to pack 5,000 books and send it, it'll be a lot of work for him. Whereas a printer already has, uh, you know, manpower, he already has all the printing material and he agreed. So printer printed the book, packed it, and it went from here straight to dispatch we skipped all these steps. It saved us inventory. It saved our person from packing, our person from dispatching. It just went from the printers to dispatch. And so, you know, a small individual request, our person handles. But when we print a new book and we want to, you know, post it to a, you know, a huge number of people on our mailing list, we just do this process from the printers straight to dispatch. We just provide them the, our person just provides him the labels of the addresses that need to be sent to, and he just does it. Same thing when we do bulk, you know, sometimes for bookstores, and let's say there are about 30 bookstores around the country, and we, to every bookstore, you know, we send bulk quantity. Uh, in it, there used to be a time when our person used to pack it and send it, but we said, hey, here's a simpler way to do it. He prints it, we tell him how much to send to where, and he prints it, he packs it, goes to dispatch, right? So what are we saying? Keep the process simple. If you can avoid unnecessary steps, do it, right? So we realized uh, we don't always have to go through these steps in order to get the books for dispatch. We can skip all these steps if we just make a simple arrangement for the printer. And that's what we started doing, you know. And the day-to-day -day individual small requests that come in, our person continues to handle, but major work, it goes like this. And we've skipped all these steps, you know. So you've got to think like that and uh, make some arrangements and improves what's happening, right? And then we have to ensure things are moving, avoid delays, you know. So like I said, waiting for approval, waiting for person X to do something. So, you know, it, technically we call it turnaround time. So we told, we set for our person, 
uh, for these two people here. Hey, the turnaround time for book request has to be two to three days. That's it. So when a request comes within three days, books go out. Right? So we try to maintain that. But of course, for that to happen, all these other things have to be in place. Right? So you set some target in terms of turnaround time. Then also as you're designing your system and your process, some things you do to you need to think preemptively. You say, hey, what could go wrong in if something, you know, if if what could go wrong in this whole system? Yeah. One thing is, let's say either person is unwell, right? Suppose this person is unwell. Is it possible, you know, I, I need to have an alternative path for the, this work to continue to happen. If this person is sick uh, or unwell or out of office or goes on vacation for one week, two weeks, does it mean that everything is going to come to a standstill for two weeks or a week? You know, however long this person is out of the office. This work has to go on. So we have to have an alternate path. We have to look at things preemptively. Same thing. If this person is going away for a week, two weeks, what is our alternative? Books should keep going, right? Or think preemptively in other ways. You know, can we give this person another option? You know, for example, if we are unable to send books out. So, you know, basically the last uh, two years, we've really moved a lot of people to try and use our digital books, right? Instead of going through the post, a physical book, we have given trying to look at other options. You know, can more people use PDFs instead of us sending them printed books? Slowly, we are moving people. So, we have this person knows that when there's a request coming in, we could suggest to them, uh, "Would you like to use uh, the PDF book instead?" Right. So we try to suggest that. Now, not everybody may be happy using a PDF, so they may still request a printed book, that's fine. But uh, that's one of our backups or alternatives. Uh, you have to think preemptively also in if what could go wrong in this whole process, yeah? uh, and then have backup plans, have plans to uh, deal with those kinds of situations. Okay, So that will help us uh, make sure the work is going on. Uh, uh, just a few things here, two more things, is uh, we had to keep an eye on the output. So, you know, we know, so this person sends a report on a weekly basis, you know. Uh, I mean, during COVID time, it's not happening, but under normal circumstances, every week he will visit so many bookstores, do personal delivery, so many back, so many requests have been fulfilled. Um, uh, and on a monthly, this is the inventory, this is the balance we have. You know, so there's a report that comes back on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis, giving us information on what is happening here, right? So that will help us keep an eye on, are we working fine? Do we need to improve, right? So you need to have what we, in the very beginning, we said a feedback mechanism to keep improving the system, right? So the purpose of the report is not just to know this person's work, but to know overall, is our system designed well? Is the process happening fine? Do we have to make improvements? Uh, do we have to increase our output? Uh, are things happening? So we get also now because we moved to a digital uh, download, so we can you know, monthly reports, okay, how many books were downloaded uh, every month to each book, titles, languages. So you get a view of, okay, this is how things are happening. Yeah, uh, it's doing fine or it's not doing fine. You know, you get a understanding of what's going on. So uh, I'm just trying to ex uh, you know, share with us that even though we are a ministry, the organization part is very important. Uh, the organization, not, not only does it have the structure, but it goes down. The smallest level is each system, which is surrounded by various processes. Each system and the process around it has to be, uh, uh, you know, constantly optimized. You have to have a way to look at it 
and make it really good. Okay. Um, so what must we do to improve the processes? S three simple things, right? One is you need to collect data. Uh, that means you need to know what's happening. So for example, like I just mentioned, we have data on a weekly basis. How many bookstores were sent? Uh, uh, how, many, uh, how many bookstores were visited? How many book requests were fulfilled? Uh, monthly basis, what is our inventory? How many downloads happen? What's happening on the download side? Uh, what's happening on the translation side? How many books were translated? Which books are being worked upon? So that you know, just for that little part, we have the data so we can understand, okay, things are happening. If things are not going, it's okay, why isn't it happening? What is wrong? Uh, why aren't our books being translated? You know, or you know, where is what is happening? So you have to keep an eye on data and then analyze. Now, sometimes you cannot get uh, data. You have to observe, especially when it comes to quality, right? So I randomly go and open up the books to see, you know, uh, what's happening. Uh, are the books done properly? Are there errors in it? You know, uh, quality. So sometimes you cannot quantify quality. So you have to observe quality. You have to go and check, you know, uh, check the books, check what's being put out there uh, and so on. So, but it's still part of this whole, you know, collecting information. Then you have to analyze the results. Okay, what is happening? Uh, are we doing well? Uh, so, you know, uh, where can we improve? Take action, monitor, repeat. So this to improve a process, you have to do this part. You know, if you don't do this part, you can never improve a process. So again, here is a, a problem that many churches, uh, ministries make. They say, okay, a ministry is happening, but they don't do this part of collecting data, analyzing results, taking uh, required action, and just keeping this loop going. So what happens is ministry is happening, but nobody knows, is it being effective or is it not being effective? Is it, uh, can it be made better? There's no process improvement involved. And so a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources can just be wasted, okay? So this is a very important part of making sure things are going well. Okay, there has to be, somebody has to be monitoring, somebody has to be taking, uh, looking at what's happening and things. You know, so typically when we do this course, I tell people just, you know, do some exercises, uh, but in this, uh, you know, we, we, we want to do this, but you know, if, for example, if you're setting up a traveling ministry, what are some of the things you need to think about? You know, you need somebody to, contact people to get you uh, uh, preaching engagements. You need to, you know, depending on as your ministry grows, you may have uh, resources that you are making available to people. You may have prayer requests coming in, people calling you for prayer. So you need to put all of these things in place. So although you are doing a traveling ministry, they, you need to have the backing of a good organization and with all the systems and process to back up what you are doing. Similarly, you can think about a Bible college, you know, what are things that are needed? Uh, how do you do it? And so on. Okay? These are uh, various things to think about. Okay, so uh, just, just uh, a little information here on the operations, uh, on the systems and the processes that uh, are involved in, uh, in you know, getting the organization to function very well, okay? I wanna leave this time open for some questions and answers. We can discuss anything you have in mind. Uh, we just looked at, you know, we were just looking at the books area, publications, one uh, example, but whatever your ministry you're doing, you know, you need to think about things uh, like this. Uh, any questions, any things you would like to discuss? Uh, Conan, anything?
uh, first one question so uh, you said uh, you know uh, we ask the printer uh, to dispatch all the copies for say uh, you know just for an example our publication don't lose hope so you know you send it uh, you send it for uh, you know printing and the printer said okay it's ready so is uh, is an approval involved in that place to check the quality uh, you know is someone go to the uh, the shop and check the quality and the, is there an error or it will come to our place for a approval check how is it passed or what uh... mm. yeah so um, for the book itself you know the the whole proof before he prints it there's a whole process of uh, proof reading and all that you know so we check it uh, i mean the people involved will check it will do the processing the proofing and they give the approval saying okay go ahead and print 5000 copies so that's on, so only after the whole proofing final checks corrections the uh, approval is given to print so then the printer prints the 5000 copies then he will pack it up we give him the 5000 addresses and he will straight away dispatch those 5000 books you know or usually we print more than what is needed so uh, if we are going to send 5000 books we may print 7000 so that we keep 2000 in our inventory and 5000 is sent by him directly to the people but the quality check happens before the printing okay pastor moment and then our person goes just to kind of see make sure that you know the labels are being packed and sent and then we get um, you know from the post office we get uh, you know they, they basically they do the franking that means we don't they don't stick stamps uh, it goes through the automated system so we get a count back from the post office saying you know they have franked you know 5000 things so we know that okay we we gave him 5000 labels post office gave us a franking bill of 5000 so we know that 5000 have actually been sent out so there is a check and a balance over there as well uh oh, pastor stephen here yes uh, pastor in spite of having the process in the system very simple um and you know uh, on paper and it's made very clear uh but you know so, uh, if in case that we see uh mistakes that that keeps ho- happening you know very often uh even in spite of uh, uh uh telling the you know the person who involves in the system uh but you know th- th- there are the small minor mistakes that happens which kind of affects the other system also it is since mm. uh, since uh, there is a the flow of process that goes from one system to another system because of the small minor it's it's very small mi- minor mistake but again it it kind of affects the the entire system and in spite of telling and dealing with that person who involves in the system it just keeps happening so how to deal with it what are the, some of the ways that you know uh, is is there any solution to uh, deal with that mm. yeah that's i mean it, it's a good point and it does happen uh, next week we're going to talk about human resources i think uh, but okay so oh. you know <laughs> but initially right initially what you do is uh, you try to find out why it is happening right so hey w- w- what happened why you know so mm, you know here can, can we help it in some way you know maybe they uh, they didn't they didn't have a good computer i mean just depending on what the work is maybe they don't have a good computer maybe they don't have the tools to do the work uh, so but then eventually it'll come down to the individual you know okay you you've checked all those they do have a computer they do have a good internet connection they have what the tools they need but mistake is still happening then it's basically now uh the skill level of the person or the uh, you know example uh, especially say uh, if I go, if we go back to the issue of uh, books uh, when we're doing books we need somebody with good attention to detail you know the moment they see something uh, i mean this is not a good thing always they need to catch the mistakes right they need to their eyes should immediately be triggered by what is wrong Uh, yeah. normally we want our eyes to be triggered by what is right but in, <laughs> yeah. but in this case you know finding fault is a good thing <laughs> so 
they, it, they should be these kinds of people, people who can just quickly see, hey, you know, there are five mistakes on this page. Uh, but you need those kinds of people, right? You need those kinds of people to do the proofing. People who can immediately tell the mistakes. Uh, so maybe the person doing it does not have that kind of a mindset. You know, they, that they're not keen on finding mistakes. So then, uh, yeah, so then that is a problem because th that, uh, you know, uh, you've given the best tools, you've given them the computer, internet connection. And finally, it comes down to this one that, hey, so that is where things are lacking then. So then you, as a leader, you, you know, you say, hey, uh, let's put somebody else here to do this piece of work because the mistakes are continuously happening, right? And uh, so you need the person with the right skill uh, or the right, uh, you know, in this case, attention for detail. So you just change, you may have to change the, uh, the person who's doing the work, yeah. Okay, sure, sure, Pastor. Yeah. Good. Anything else? So, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, we've tried to keep this in a very simple way on how we think about it, but I really want to encourage us, you know, um, uh, that from a ministry perspective, uh, we think like this so that we can give our best. You know, the ultimate uh, the objective is um, that uh, if the organization functions well, the ministry uh, will happen well and the people will be uh, served well, you know. So, you know, and, and in a ministry, so many different things happen. Services happen, prayer happens, phone calls come, so many different things are going on. If we can do all of these things very well, People will be happy. People will be ministered to, and that's why the organizational side of things are uh, very important. Okay, so we'll wrap up in prayer today. I, I think the next topic is human resources, if I remember correctly. So we'll get that get into that next week. Uh, talk about some practical things. Okay, thank you very much. Let's close in prayer. Uh, somebody could just pray, and we will dismiss. Oh, Kiran, I saw. What was your question? Page number eighteen. How can we do preaching system at page 18? Sorry, what is it? Page 18. Um, so Kiran, uh, I'm just trying to understand your question. Uh, so page 18 has the, the diagram of the uh, the organization ministry and what is your question sir i mean bible college and full all administrative all work together how the preaching and teaching uh, systematically work uh you're talking about like in the sunday service or you're talking about in the bible college sir in the bible college okay Okay. Yeah. So you asked me, okay, I think you're asking about how the Bible college, uh, those things. Okay. So there's a lot of planning that happens. So example is uh, before the semester starts, right? We have, we, uh, we, we know, okay, there are 24, I'll give it to you in a very short way. Okay. Very, in maybe one or two minutes. We know that 24 courses have to be taught in that semester. Uh, so first we decide, you know, uh, who is going to teach which course, okay? And then uh, we have a timetable. So we, okay, who is first year, second year, third year, we create the timetable and we make sure that, you know, the person who is teaching the course is available. You know, there's no uh, overlap, no mismatch. Then we assign to them, uh, you know, what they need to teach. And then of course, uh, content, the what they're going to cover, you know, they they know uh, that this is what they're going to cover. They prepare, and then once the semester starts, you know, each one is doing their class, they're covering their content, and uh, that's how it goes. So the main planning is assigning teachers to teach the course and assigning the schedule. That's the main part. Okay, so in a very briefly. Okay, thank you. Let's close in prayer. Uh, somebody could pray with us and we can dismiss. Aaron, would you like to close in prayer?
Yeah. Sure, Pastor. Let me pray. Thank you, Lord Father, for the beautiful day that you have led us, Lord Father. Lord, thank you for your word, Lord Father, as we have learned, Lord Father, that Lord help us to apply this in our daily walk with you, Lord. And I pray for all the students, all the faculties, Lord Father. Thank you, Father. Especially I pray for all the um, faculties. Thank you, Father, for using them mightily for your glory, Lord. Lord. Lord, I pray that Lord Father give them more wisdom, Lord Father, to teach us, Lord Father. Thank you so much for everything, Lord Father. And Lord Father, as uh, we end up these uh, classes, Lord Father, Lord, I pray for all the students, all the uh, faculties. I, I submit all, the, uh, all of us into your name. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for being part of the class today. I'll see you again next week. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye now. God bless. Bye now.